Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey has to be among the most important films ever made, perhaps the most important, or at the very least, one of the most influential. As a result, I've been asked to take a look at the 4K UHD Blu-ray release of this 1968 classic, as some consider it the best quality disc release thus far. Does it stand up to this accolade, or are there better quality discs out there? Let's take a look. This film is a technical tour de force, but not only for its pioneering special effects, I'm thinking mainly of the format on which it was filmed. 1968 was a time when Cinerama theatres were still in existence, even though the spectacular three strip releases of earlier times had been consigned to the history books. Ways to utilise the enormous curved screens in these theatres were being sought, and new large format widescreen processes were being used. Among these 70mm giants were such famous names as Todd A.O. and Super Panavision. 2001 was shot primarily in Super Panavision, but with some scenes in Todd A.O. And with the clever use of lenses, the ultimate screenings on those deeply curved Cinerama screens are the stuff of legend. Super Panavision is a 65mm camera stock with release prints struck on 70mm, which has an extra 2.5mm on each side of the sprockets to provide an extra pair of soundtracks on each side, making a total of six separate tracks. This is a section of 70mm from Ridley Scott's Legend, and you can see the large sound stripes on either side, which contain two separate tracks within each. The first five tracks are for the front array of speakers located behind the screen, and the very end track is for the surround effects. Nowadays 70mm prints are projected with digital soundtracks, but at the time of 2001 it was magnetic 6-track stereo. There are only three genuine Cinerama cinemas in the world today, but all have occasional screenings of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Here in the UK, we have the Pictureville Cinema at Bradford, which has a widescreen film festival each October, and is one of the three Cinerama theatres still in existence. Keep an eye on the Pictureville for the next chance to see 2001 on a deeply curved screen, because it does make the occasional appearance. In the USA, the Cinerama Dome is still operating on Sunset Boulevard, and still has the occasional Cinerama screening. This theatre opened in November 1963, and when I was last there in 2011, it was managed by a true film enthusiast who understood the importance of large format film. The three strip Cinerama process was introduced in 1952. Three cameras running in sync then had to be screened in sync using three linked projectors. In addition, a fourth projector was used for the magnetic multi-channel sound, totalling seven tracks in all. The deeply curved screen was louvered to minimise cross-screen reflections, but generally the whole process was labour-intensive and proved to be too expensive to make it viable in the long term. Much like IMAX today, the format was watered down and 70mm single projector screenings were utilised, but the name was still retained. Some 70mm films work more satisfactorily than others on the Cinerama screens, and 2001, by its very nature, is one of those that works best. Super Panavision 70 gives an aspect ratio of 2.2 to 1, and when projected on Cinerama screens, uses special lenses to help simulate the original curved nature of the three-strip process. The three strip Cinerama films had a frame size that was six brockets high, whereas 70mm is only five, so there was an inevitable reduction in overall clarity. Nevertheless, it is the 70mm process that results in the exceptional image quality of 2001. 
Generally speaking, the bigger the gauge, the better the final image, and the major advantage to those of us enjoying these films in the home is that the quality of the original master translates down to home movie formats such as the new 4K discs. 2001 is no exception, but there has been a little degradation over the years. Film stocks in 1968 were not quite of today's quality, and also were not of the low-fay variety, which was introduced by Kodak in 1979, and became mainstream in the early 1980s. Thus, the original negative for 2001 has not only suffered damage over the years, but has faded to almost nothing. I understand that we are now three generations down from that original negative, and each time a new negative has been struck, each additional process has inevitably resulted in slight degradation. I have had the CineVision Super 8 print for many years, and that doesn't come close to the quality offered on 4K, although it has to be said that CineVision rarely produced very good Super 8 prints. We screened extracts from 2001 a number of times at the British Film Collectors Conventions in both Super 8 and 35mm. On Super 8 the later Durand scope trailer release is much better quality than the CineVision feature, but sadly Durand never released anything further from this historic film. The DVD appeared in 1998, but unfortunately that initial release was not a 16x9 anamorphic and suffered from a 4x3 widescreen letterbox format despite the menus being correctly presented in 16x9. I suspect the letterbox master created for the Laserdisc release was simply transferred to the DVD. So just how good is the UHD Blu-ray? Well, it does give a good first impression, and despite not being as good as I had hoped, it is still very good. Of course, it is not as impactive as it would have been at the initial release, with the 70mm prints taken from the original negative, but it should be borne in mind that this is for viewing in the home, and therefore on much smaller screens. I would say it's probably on a par with an average 35mm print today, and I don't think any of us can ask for better than that. With regards to this being the best 4K UHD Blu-ray release so far, I don't think so. Not quite. One title that immediately springs to mind is Kenneth Branagh's Murder on the Orient Express. As a result of this production, Kodak reintroduced 65mm processing in London. Branagh used Panavision System 65 with Super Panavision lenses and colours that are so enhanced in the final product that it is perhaps reminiscent of the rich dye transfer Technicolor prints of Hollywood's golden era. But this film had one advantage over those dye transfer prints, namely it was shot on modern fine grain film stock. On the 4K disc of 2001 the film grain is clearly evident, but in Murder on the Orient Express it's not, and in fact I think it's the perfect marriage between old school large format film and modern technology. There is not a single soft focus scene that I could pick out, and the sharpness, clarity and colour mean that this is the best video quality I think I have yet seen. 35mm film transfers are impressive enough, but 65mm film is 5 sprockets high as opposed to the 4 of 35mm, so the overall image size on each frame of the final 70mm print is over 3 times larger, and that is what makes it so impressive. But getting back to 2001 A Space Odyssey, Unless you are one of the few who has access to a 35mm or 70mm print, this 4K release represents the best quality available for viewing this historic film in the home, and for that reason it can be fully recommended. Sound is DTS, Digital Theatre System, and very impressive. It is still quite an expensive purchase in the UK, but I obtained mine in Italian packaging at less than half the price of the UK purchase price, so that might be worth something worth considering, but you don't get the postcards and uh, the little booklet that comes with the UK release. Within here there's the 4K, which has English writing on it, so it must be the same disc, and then the Blu-ray of the film, which is also very good quality, and the bonus disc, which has a selection of documentaries, quite a lot of them, but I think all those have been seen before, but still nice to have in one place. 
The Blu-ray, as I say, very good quality, so even if you don't have 4K facilities yet, this might be worth buying the 4K package just for the future um, and still enjoying the exceptional quality on the Blu-ray. So, whether on Blu-ray or 4K, this film needs to be seen on the biggest screen available. Perhaps someone out there will even try building a Cinerama-style curve screen in their home. Now that certainly would be something worth seeing. So I hope you enjoyed this look at 2001 A Space Odyssey. If you did, please give the video a like, and perhaps consider subscribing so that I'll be encouraged to create similar content in the future. So until the next video, bye bye for now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cinerama.